Circle geometry is one of those lovely isolated topics. So you learn a little bit, and then what you're going to do is you're going to apply that in a question. The thing about these questions is that they are obvious, they are, English is gone today. They are often easily identifiable in your paper. So you can sort of relax and know, this is my question about circle geometry. And often they've got quite a high mark value. So it's worthwhile knowing what's going on here and being comfortable with the techniques that you're using so that you can say, right, circle geometry crossed off. I've got that one on my understanding list and I know I can tackle that question. So the idea of this lesson is to go through those two little formulas that you're going to add into your arsenal at, at AES working with circle geometry, but also to touch on some of the work from IG that is so supportive of what you're doing here. Okay, so we're going to start off with complete basics, and that is just terminology. Because it's amazing how terminology can make a difference in understanding these questions and in working with the formulas. So this is a sector, roughly. Okay, so it's a slice out of a circle. It's a slice of pizza. Circle geometry is a good one to relate to food. The angle here in the middle, we call theta. Okay, so that's the angle within our sector. This whole thing, we're gonna call a sector. The line here, this is the center of the circle. This here is, I know what, I can't do it. This has to be fixed. Because this is supposed to be the circumference of the circle and it's not a chance, it's so lumpy bumpy. Okay, so it is a circumference of the circle. Looking a lot more realistic. Okay. So, a line that joins from the center to the circumference of the circle, well, that must be a radius. And then so must this one, because he's doing the same exact route from center to circumference. Then we have a nice interesting word. This piece of the circumference here is known as an arc. Okay, so that is just a piece of the circumference. So we can find the arc length, and then we would have the length of that little piece of circumference. The other line we've added in here is this line here. Okay, this is the line that's going from, let's call them A and B. So AB equals a chord. And this is the first thing where I want to talk a little bit about notation. See here, we wrote AB. AB is a straight line. That is the notation that we use for a straight line. If we want to indicate the arc, we can't write AB equals. We have to write arc AB. Because if we just say AB, we are talking about the chord. We're talking about that straight line, which in some cases we will be, in some cases we won't. So it's quite important to distinguish between what's my chord and what's my arc. So one is an AB, the other is an arc AB. Okay, so the whole thing is a sector. That's, we've talked now about the lines. Let us think a moment about, we need another color, the areas okay so this area here is called the segment so we can calculate the area of the segment we can calculate the area of the sector these are shapes not just lines they're 2d shapes okay so our segment is the orange segment looking like thing on the end of our sector and in the middle here let's call this c for center then we have a triangle. But he's quite an important triangle. He's not just any old triangle, okay? What I like to refer to this as the triangle in the sector.
Because the thing about him is that he's got two sides the same. Because remember, we've got two radii, C, A, and B. So if we've got two sides the same, we also have two angles on the base the same. So there's important things that come out of that understanding that this is not just any old random triangle. When we have a triangle in a sector, it's a little bit of a special triangle. So your sector is your pizza, your segment is your orange, and your triangle in your sector is just a special entity entirely. So when we are working with area, we are working with a sector, a segment, or a triangle. When we are working with length, we are working with a radius, a chord, or an arc. Now those might sound basic. You might be sitting there thinking, why on earth is she telling me things like this? And the thing is that common errors that people make is saying the area of an arc. You can't do that. An arc is a line, it doesn't have an area, okay? It's the area of a segment. It's the length of an arc. And when you start making mistakes like this, it's saying that you don't understand what is a segment. You don't understand what is an arc. And if you don't understand what is something, then you can't get marks for an answer. Okay, you've got to communicate properly. You've got to use the correct terminology and the correct understanding of what it is that you're working with. Okay, so areas is sectors, segments, and triangles. Lengths is radius, chord, and arc. Are we happy with the notation and the shapes and the names and the terminology? Okie dokie. Then let us talk about our fancy formulas for AS. Now the thing about these is that they make life easy. So what are you looking at? You're looking at two simple little things. You're looking at S equals R theta, and you are looking at A equals one half R squared theta. And then we are taking a big red pen and we are writing in very big letters the word radians. When you see that circle geometry question, you put your calculator into radians and then you continue. The first thing you do is you put into radians because these formulas only work if you're in radians. If you use degrees and circle geometry questions, you lose marks. Don't let me remind you again after I've marked your assignment. Okay, so you have to be in radians when you do circle geometry at AS. It is not debatable. We cannot have a conversation about this because these formulas work in radians. So you work in radians. Okay, so what are they? Well, S, of course, this is actually standing in, this is our little tiny notation for arc length. So you can use S in the same way that you would use A for area or P for perimeter, or you can say arc AB or arc FG, depending on how your arc is named. R didn't change arrows back to front. R is still your radius. And theta, remember, he was what we call that angle in the sector. Okay, and we can make another note with a bold star in radians. That angle must be in radians. Okay, so now we don't actually have to worry about that whole, you know, you did this sort of thing at, um, at IG and you came across um, the length of an arc and you would say, for example, 60 divided by 360 times circumference. Goodness gracious, there's one, two, 
three, four, or five things that you're going to input there just to find R cake. Now you can just put two, R and theta, finished. So we don't need to go that long way around that we do with degrees because radians are actually so tightly linked into actually what a circle is and the relationship between that radius and the circumference. So all we need is R times theta when we work in radians. And we always want to be efficient. We always want that quickest, simplest, straightforwardest, most efficient route in order to get to our answer. So now this one, A, this is sector area. Okay, the entire pizza slice. Half is a half, never changed anything. R is still radius and theta is still, if you write it properly, angle in the sector. In bold again, in radians. So these are fancy little formulas, okay? Two things, three things, so much more straightforward than all the nonsense that you use at IG level, okay? But they must be done in radians. That is the one thing that you take away from this entire lesson. Please be it that when you start a circle geometry question, you put your calculator in radians and you forget that degrees ever even existed. Okay, you work in radians. So, obviously, if the formulas are quite so simple, the questions are gonna be a lot more fun because we've gotta think of a way now to make you guys think, to make you guys look at what you're doing. So often these are not quite as straightforward as, oh, that's my radius and that's my theta, plug it in, arc link equals, area equals. Okay, so there are a few things from your ID notes that will make life easier. So let's have a look at them now so that we are better prepared when we move into the questions next week. We need to think back to these non-right angle triangles. Remember, you always label your points as capital letters, and then we have little letters opposite. Okay, so a, little a is opposite big A, little b opposite big B, little c opposite big C. Little letters for our sides, big letters for our points, and the angle at that point. But hopefully you're remembering, this is going to take us in the direction of the sine rule. It doesn't disappear. Okay, A over sine A is the same as B over sine B is the same as little c over sine big C. So the ratio of these sides, even though we don't have right angle triangle, we can still use this understanding of a ratio to calculate unknown sides, or we can flip them over and calculate unknown angles. So keep this one in mind. The next one you want to remember, funnily enough, remember related to that sine rule, you learned this one. A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A. So a greeting for the Cos rule. And this is where our sector in a triangle in a sector even comes in so useful. So let's have him there so that we can see him, right? Chord RR and theta. Now let's have a look at what happens with this formula. If we wanted to say chord squared equals, well, chord is opposite theta. So then we're looking at our other sides would be r squared plus r squared minus two times r times r times cos of theta. And you see there's a lot of repetition in here because our two sides are the same. The two sides are the radius. So we can actually simplify this one so chord equals the square root, 2r squared, 1 minus 
cos theta. Because r squared plus r squared is 2r squared, and 2 times r times r is 2r squared. So why write it twice when you could factorize and write it once? When we take the 2r squared out of this addition, we're left with a 1, and when we take it out of the minus cos theta, minus 2r squared cos theta, we're left with the minus cos theta. So we can take our original cos rule and we can convert it into an important way of understanding what is the length of our chord. But this is why it's so important that you're identifying this is for a triangle in a sector. Then we can use this relationship. You're going to see other triangles in these questions, okay? But if it doesn't have two radii and a chord, then we can't use this simplified relationship. We might still be able to use the cos rule effectively, but the chord is the one we're looking for when we have this triangle in a sector. The other one that we're going to manipulate a little bit to make even more friendly for our purposes at AS level Okay, if you've got the sine rule, you've got the cos rule, that other one that comes in when you don't have a right angle triangle, it must be area triangle equals one half AB sine C. So the area of any triangle using two sides and the angle between them. So, here we would have R, R, and theta. So again, triangle in a sector, oh, not in that color. Because we're now going to adapt it. So let's actually use the same format as we had before. So R, R, sine theta. Okay, so here we're going to change this to area triangle in sector, because we can simplify this, half AB, so the sides on either side of our angle is one half R times R, R squared. Sine this angle between sine theta. So now we've got our formula that we just talked about where S equals R theta and A equals one half r squared theta. Now we can add in the chord. We have a formula for the chord. And let's just give you one of those as well. Because then we also have an area for the triangle in the sector. So if you think back to where we talked about before, we talked about working with lines. So we were working with the, the radius and the chord and the arc length. So there's our arc length, there's our chord, and both of them include the radius, so we can work in other directions. When it comes to area, we're talking about the sector, we're talking about the triangle, and there's a funky relationship between that sector and the triangle. If you remove the triangle from the full sector, then you're left with the segment. So the question has come through, um, using, do you use radians, converting degrees to radians? Okay, so you wouldn't even start with radians. You would actually think in terms, of, you wouldn't even start with degrees, you wouldn't be doing conversions. You would put your calculator into radians and just use it in radians. So if, for example, you're talking about a right angle triangle, you wouldn't say that it's 90 degrees. You would say it's pi over two radians. Okay, if you're thinking about an equilateral triangle, you wouldn't say that the angles are 60 degrees. You would just think of it in terms of pi over three, because angles in a triangle add up to pi radians, not 180 degrees. So you actually convert your entire mindset to working in radians. So even here, when you're doing one minus cos theta, when you're doing half r squared sine theta, all of this, is still in radians. So you're doing all of your trig in radians. So we'll write it here again. So that there is no doubt in your mind. 
that whatever you do in relation to a circle geometry question must be done in radians. So now we've got things that we can look at for lengths and things that we can look at for areas. So let's now just pull everything together a bit. When you are looking at a question, you will get things like, oh gosh, um, we'll have this and then we'll have that out of it. And then let's say we put a little one in. In fact, this is actually a question of some sort somewhere along the lines. Okay, and you've got to find various um, angles. You've got to find various lengths. You've got to find various areas. Okay, it's always about those areas, lengths, and angles because that's what you're working with when it comes to circle geometry. So remember what we said. We said areas, we are working with sectors, triangles and segments for our lengths we are working with a radius we are working with an arc and we are working with chords okay and then it's always sort of over all of that is your angle in your sector which is theta. So he overarches everything because everything depends on that angle in the sector. So what are you doing when you're getting these complex questions? There's even questions that look, there's another question that does like this and it has funny other triangles and then it has other bumps and, and things and weirdness going on, okay. And so for example, this one here is not a triangle in a sector because it's got the right angle in. So there's other fun and games going on that you've got to keep an eye out for. So what is it that you're, you're sort of focusing on? What are you looking for? And you're looking, obviously, for, first one is sectors. What pizza slices can you see? Because then you can work with your arc length, then you can work with your area of a sector and all the other related things that we've just been through, bringing in from our IGMAX and our simplifications for use here. Okay, but also it, once you've got that angle in the sector, then it opens up everything. Sometimes you have to find that angle or you have to find a radius and you don't have an arc length. So there's more pieces of missing information that you've got to get through on the way to being able to use them. And what comes in so handy there is to look for right angle triangles. So there you are looking for your traditional triangle with remembering that this is now pi over two. There's no such thing as 90 degrees anymore in these questions. Degrees have disappeared. They've left the building, they've just evaporated. They do not exist in your head or in your calculator. Okay, so you have a pi over two triangle. And then of course, you open yourself up for sine, cos, and tan. So those are also going to be very good friends because those can help you get lengths which you can then apply into using within your formulas that you're using for a more fun and games bits of the question. So the thing that you're looking for and bearing in mind when you do this is that you don't want to calculate every possible length in the situation. And you've got to think through first and you've got to only calculate what is relevant. What do you need in order to do this question? And then that's what you calculate. Because of course, with Pythagoras and with sine, cos, and tan, you can, you can go on forever when it comes to triangles. But the trick is to not do so. You don't want to waste time and you don't want to waste space. So it's another one of those questions like we did in coordinate geometry, where you've got to think through, what is my question? What have I got in the question? What information have they given me? And how am I going to get to where I need to be? And then you plan yourself out, one, two, three, and you do your steps and you get your answer. So that's what we're gonna do then next week is we're gonna pull a whole of these questions and we're gonna work through seeing the things in the diagrams of the question 
and then how we relate that into calculations and how we lay it out so that it's easy for the examiner to follow what we are accurately doing in our message.